Well, the challenge is, I think here now will be like most us looking at most stores. Like you say, you probably can week here, you get so far, then you can come back doing the same thing again, you know? So you don't really achieve nothing. What I'd like to see is more like they hit machinery, but it'll help a lot. You know, at the end of the day, it's only down to two, three, you know what I mean? And we had a garden center up and running now, so you can take the next person to help you, so I don't have nobody on my select to help me yet, much, you know? So this is the tourist area. This is the new one that we put up now. So what we do when we get people coming in Austin to plant a tree, so we bring them to the tourist area here, and then we plant whatever, gumwood or ebony, whatever you choose. So this is the new one. My name is Christopher Klingon. I'm a senior officer for the Living Flowers. Well, I do a uh, maintenance uh, <coughs> It's like weeding, irrigationing, rabbit catching, and any other jobs, and also that's the ideal machinery. And I deal with all planting trees. I've been working here now ever since uh, 2015. I've come out for no use now. So the Millennium Forest was initially part of the Great Wood, um, which encompassed a large area on the side of the island, and um, through deforestation from animals chopping the wood down, it ended up to this barren um, area. In the 1980s, replanting of endemic plants started in the area. It was the success of this that led on to the Millennium Forest Project with the replanting in 2000. Um, again, the success of that led on to further projects. Well, the forest is made up mostly of flowers. So when, when it's seed, we go crack the seed, we store the seed, you know, we store seed here and then we sow it straight away. Once they, once they part it out, take them down to the shade house. Once they're ready up here, then Chrissy will plant it out in the forest. He could help from uh, some churn students and stuff as well. That this piece here, from that piece, oh now, I can say them trees start in um, November uh, 2016. That's the hike they were there. See, because I was planting them with the Navy, my Navy shall come in and we plant their crew. Tours of booking in, uh, in Jamestown with Amanda, uh, if they got free planting. So when they'll get the numbers and then Amanda will ring me and then I will free, uh, get everything ready. And then they come out to plant trees and then I skim a tour of the name of fires, you know, yeah. Um, so right now we doing some cleaning around the trees. Right, so this is Wong trees. Well, it's come every Friday. So we got Henri, we got Dai, Charmaine, and Corbin. So every Friday they come. So Henri been here like four years now, and then his wife been here a year. But they always come on a Friday to help out for well, half a day. The Millennium Forest has a small team. They've got um, three working on site, and they've got the, the head of conservation and myself. So in total, we've got a team of five. And when you consider the vast expanse of the forest and how much we would love to do, that is a very small team. Um, and even though it's a small team, we, we do have a big impact. But we don't have enough manpower to be able to facilitate more visits. We don't have enough manpower to be able to facilitate additional activities. If we did have more staff, but again, all of that is dependent on funding. So even improving the place aesthetically, being able to have more seating, more interactive activities or to have the, the appropriate signage, all of that is funding dependent. So it's having someone to be able to look for the fund that or the grants that would allow the Millennium Forest to develop further. Well, I suppose we have more fun and we can buy more quality seed and stuff for some seeds. It's different to the others, like you know. And I guess I suppose more help, maybe more staff. We be producing more plants and stuff. Uh, Chrissy also needs help at the forest at times, eh? so there's only three of three guys out here, so we can probably work with each other, you know. I'd like to see if they have a tractor with a little attachment to it, and they'll probably help because, like, cleaning the land, we got arrows to dig up, we got trees to cut. So if we have attachment, I think it will help a lot, you know, and it will help develop this place here. Mm -hmm. And like more labor, you know. Mm -hmm. But like, like I say, if you have more labor, but you still have you need machinery to help to dig. Also, you know. Well, it's only me here 
little too on the plants and probably getting David to help me sometimes. Um, and the more stuff here, I guess, the more plants we, we um, produce, you know. Maybe I can just st strictly stuck to producing the, um, the endemics and put other stuff on the vegetables or the fruit trees or whatever, you know. Because mm -hmm. the endemics is very important as well. And I think where we're at now, it's not just trees, it's, it's a lot more. So we've been able to showcase that it's trees, but from the trees, you get all the, the bugs. From the bugs, it gets the wire beds coming in. Um, th there's so many activities. We can do tree planting. We can do maintenance. We can do a bug hunt. We can just sit up surf. We can do a trail. We can see historical points around the forest. We can compare a tree that you planted um, two years ago, revisit what has happened and then. Has the, the habitat improved? And I think it's been able to, to share that journey, um, again, making it a community forest that excites me. From the gate, from the gate down, we hear old school churn. So we hear from um, Prince Andrew, um, country school, town, and also Hartford. So there's 2020, these trees there from the bottom to the top here. We've got the education department on board sharing that excitement about learning about the forest. Um, it's an outdoor classroom. We've got the primary schools on board. We're working now with the youth groups. Youth groups can see the potential in how they can support their badge work. Um, people can see how um, nature is just good in general, how to, to enjoy nature. So we're looking at other ideas that if you're doing yoga in the forest, if we're doing um, stargazing in the forest, if we're dining in the dark, Again, community forest, we're seeing how how we can improve and that, that's the exciting part. We're not done yet. There's so many opportunities to develop this even further. Well, it's not every day you can come back and yeah, you know, enjoy the peace and quiet and you know, just go on about your day and back with plants. That's something that I love doing. I've been working conservation for 22 years now. Ever since I was like 18 years old, I started for uh, Scotland nursery, and then I went back for lamp, and then I came here, and um, so it's a nice place to work, really. Nice, good, good staff, and we work as a team out here. The weather can be challenging at times, can be cold, but I tend to get used to it now, I guess. <laughs> and it's going to be a legacy with. 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line, this is going to be a great forest. And then you can start to see the ecology changing. So the further up you go, you can see that, yes, what we're doing is actually working and the team are doing an amazing job. And I think it is working just for the group who are all passionate and working towards the same goal. I think, you know, where else can you come to work as, as your offers have a passionate team and know that you're doing some good not just for you for your organization but for the island in general we need money you know without money we can't develop so we like probably need another shade house we need a storage place so if we get more stuff from here going out for sales so the rest and you know and tourists are coming so we can rest and make this place better you know, in the future mm -hmm.